the Honorable Member for Obura. Obura Wanenara. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Deputy Speaker, before me raising a series of questions from me without notice, uh, go along. Good plan member of Louis Milo, SOE, State M Enterprise. Uh, let me take this time, Lo talk thank you, Lo people Lo Milo Obura Wanara, long maki me the second time after ten years of good holidays. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, whilst me at this time law asking question, uh, Mr. Nap, me like congratulate him you yet. Uh, thank you again, Lord. People, Lord, Milo, Makam, Lord, look, Savi, Lord, you, now, Lord, you, Lord, come up, Deputy Speaker, again, Lord, second time. Uh, congratulations, Lord, you. Now, me like since the time too, Lord, talk, uh, I'm a mass. On behalf of Lord, people, Lord, Milo, Bro, on Nara, go long, member of long, Tari Pori, uh, Honourable uh, James Marape, Lord, come up also, Prime Minister, Lord, you, me. One kind also, me go Lord, Deputy Prime Minister, Lord, you, me too, Lord, this black country. All people belong. Lay long, mark him you. Second time. Uh, questions from me by short, uh, David Speaker. My series of, series of questions without notice are uh, directed to the Honorable Minister for State Owned Enterprises. Um, Mr. David Speaker, in recent months and up to this day, the country is experiencing continuous power blackouts on daily basis, and it's happening everywhere, in most of our cities and towns. The continuous blackout is affecting business houses, hospitals, schools, general public alike. The business houses are losing income. Our people's electrical appliances and equipments are being damaged and frozen foodstuffs Spoil. The effect of continuous blackout is felt by everyone on top of pain already inflated by rising prices of goods and services. Mr. Deputy Speaker, my first question is Is the Minister aware of this continuous blackout problem? If he is, what is he doing about continuous blackout problem? What, has he, what, has, what is his plans to remedy this problem? My second question, Deputy Speaker, is if we have a problem, instead of us pretending that all is well, can the good minister acknowledge that we have a serious problem at hand which is hard to solve by ourselves and maybe start a partial sale of privatized PNG Power Limited? We should not continue to retain an entity that is not serving the interest of our good people of Papua New Guinea. My third and last question, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is could the minister inform this House and the people of PNG current status of Ramu 2 power project? Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Honourable Minister for State Enterprise. Um, Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'd like to uh, congratulate the uh, member for Obor one another for one another for being re-elected by his people. Uh, Mr. Speaker, these are very important questions. To answer his first question, yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, just like all of us, I'm very much aware of what's happening and that we are facing power blackout right throughout the country. Uh, number two, uh, Mr. Speaker, yes, there are serious problems, but uh, they can be managed if uh, given time, Mr. Speaker. To start with, uh, Mr. Speaker, we have got three different grids, major grids operating in the country. The Port Mosby grid, which is a, which is applied, uh, which is serviced by a 130 megawatts power. Uh, Ramu, which is uh, serviced by 106 megawatts of power. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what's the name? Uh, I forgot the name, but the, uh, the power system in the East Britain province. The Warren Coast, sorry, Mr. Speaker, thank you. 
So they are serviced by those three uh, different uh, uh, power grids. Uh, with, um, in relation to the uh, power grid in Port Mosby, uh, it's, uh, it's 130 megawatts of power grid that is uh, serviced by uh, 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 two different sources, uh, independent uh, power suppliers who provide about 80 megawatts, and uh, PNG Power itself, which supplies about uh, 50 megawatts. Mr. Speaker, in the case of Port Mosby, uh, everything was operating fairly well until uh, PNG Power decided to undergo a major refurbishment and uh, renovation program for its uh, facilities up at the uh, Shirinumu Todem and uh, Rauna. And uh, Mr. Speaker, if I can uh, ask all of us to remember, these systems were built by the Australians in the 60s. And uh, since independence, there were, uh, there were no major refurbishment uh, programs uh, for those important assets. And uh, the risk, Mr. Speaker, was that if there were no such uh, major refurbishment work being carried out, the uh, missions would, be complete, would completely break down and that uh, PNG Power would then be required to uh, buy new uh, missions, which would take years. So as a result, PNG Power made that very important decision to refurbish those important uh, items up there. And uh, PNG Power was comforted by the fact that uh, it was able to source powers from two independent power producers, namely uh, uh, New Power and Dio, as well as uh, 25 megawatts from Exxon Mobil. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Exxon Mobil, due to a number of reasons, uh, withdrew its services, leaving a gap of uh, 25 megawatts. And at the same time, on the basis that uh, Exxon was going to provide uh, uh, mega, uh, those power as well as uh, power from the two independent uh, power producers, uh, PNG Power also made that uh, decision to uh, close down two important uh, power stations at uh, Kanudi and Moitaka, gas-powered uh, power stations. And when this happened, uh, PNG Power has had to, uh, uh, had to uh, make every attempt to reopen those two uh, gas-fired uh, stations at Kanudi and Moitaka. And, uh, the problem, uh, Mr. Speaker, was that uh, when you shut down uh, a station like that, it'll take years to uh, bring them back again. So it was a decision that also reflected uh, badly on the competence of the people at PNG Power, unfortunately, Mr. Speaker. So uh, we've had to uh, fly uh, experts back from uh, Korea, especially to rehabilitate those two stations. And I can, I can assure the people of uh, Port Mosley that uh, uh, Moitaka will be back on uh, full production in two weeks' time, and uh, Kanuri will be back before Christmas. Hopefully, we will not be able to, we will not be uh, spoiling uh, our Christmas for this year. So, uh, our plans are to ensure that we have uh, full power back uh, before Christmas. Uh, unfortunately, we had to uh, shut down uh, the Shirinumuto uh, dam generators as well as uh, Rauna. So, we've had a difficulty. And those evils were compounded when Exxon Mobil decided to, uh, to cease sub providing uh, power supply to, uh, to Port Mosby. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in the case of the Ramo grid, again, we've had issues with the drought, an unusual drought. And, uh, and uh, we've had good reports for the last uh, two weeks uh, to the effect that uh, rain, has started fill rain has started falling and that the dam is uh, uh, continuing to fill up. And before the end of uh, December, it will be then back to full capacity, and we, will, we should be have those uh, managed up there. But in the meantime, we have an expensive uh, IBP producer which is providing uh, service or power to, uh, to lay at uh, much higher prices. It is a cause of concern, but these are issues that we are beginning to uh, manage them. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, we have identified the, the cause of the problems, uh, a combination of management as well as technical, technical uh, requirements, and. Uh, we have not set back. We've uh, devoted most of our, our time for the last uh, three to four months to fix this. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, we will be able to have uh, a steady power before Christmas. Uh, in the case of uh, Ramu 2, Mr. Speaker, it's an important project uh, that has been developed by uh, a consortium of uh, one of the largest uh, power companies from China called Sino Hydro, as well as another company from, from Shenzhen. Uh, there are two companies which have uh, reputations for providing uh, uninterrupted power to the uh, growing city of uh, Shenzhen, and one of them was involved in the construction, Mr. Speaker, of the Three Gorges Dam, the world's biggest dam. And uh, uh, 
PNG Power as well as KCH was able to go through a, a process which resulted in, in the consortium being selected to uh, build, operate and transfer. So this is a uh, project, uh, if eventually, uh, uh, if, the, uh, if it eventually gets off the ground, we'll see our people of Morobi through the Morobi provincial government and the impacted landowners having 20% of the project, equity in the project, and our people of Eastern Islands through their provincial government and the landowners having another 20%, thereby our people having 40% equity in this project with the remaining 60 being maintained by PNG Power. For the first time since independence, the Moravia government has recognized the need of our people. Yeah. We've had a case where our landowners of Ramu, uh, Yonki, have seen power, uh, power transmission being uh, put up across the land and they have not been able to uh, have access to power as well as uh, equity in the business. So this is a game-changing uh, formula that has been um, worked up by this government and hopefully in the event that uh, uh, Wafi Golpo are able to uh, agree to take power from this important uh, uh, power source, uh, our people from Morobi, represented by their provincial government and the landowners, as well as our people from Eastern Islands, will have for the first time equity, not 5% or 2%, but significant equity, 40% in the project. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker.